This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. The racing this season has been tight and very aggressive. In the opening round at Donington, Yaume Torres got the best of defending champion Sonny Ketchen after some late race contact. The next round was at Interlagos, where the fans saw Marcello Pajan outdo Torres for the win, with, with Kanchen sitting it out. Next came Bathurst, where Kanchen and Torres made contact again. This time, Torres got the worst of it, finishing 13th. Kanchen went on to win. Last round was at Tsukuba, where the opening round results were replicated with Torres winning and Kanchen as the bridesmaid. The story continues today as the MX-5 World Tour makes its round five stop at the Grand Prix circuit at the Nuremberg And you can see all the simulated Mazda action from Green Flag to Victory Donuts live as it happens right here on the Global Sim Racing Channel via the iRacing Esports Network. Guten Tag allerseits and welcome to the Sim Sports News Countdown to Green. Over the next 15 minutes, GSRC will bring you all the storylines, all the stats and facts you'll need to appreciate the MWT Round 5 event that will immediately follow. And here to do all of that is Johan Vandenbelt, joining yours truly, Bill Soups on, to bring you our word's eye view. Joe Peek has director duties armed with cameras provided by Dougie Beard. Johan, the Nürburg is uh, on the schedule twice. Airfare Be Damned will return here in three rounds to take on the Green Hell, but today the racing will be confined to the Grand Prix circuit. Yeah, most people will immediately think of the big and notorious North Slifer when they hear Nuburgring, but today we will visit a slightly tamer Grosse Price Trekker. This 5.1 kilometer course was added in 1984 to meet ever increasing safety standards. And this addition was originally disliked very much by racing fans, who dubbed the track nicknames like Erstaatsring, which roughly translates to inferior substitutes. But even though the original reception was poor, the track started to grow racing fans and drivers alike and was described to capture the feel of an old classic racing track. 
and the track will feel as a classic as well on the MWT series, with long straights creating opportunities for drivers to stay close in each other's draft. But at the same time, there's a lot of opportunity to lose it as well, especially in the area between turn 1 and turn 4, where only one optimal racing line is featured, and drivers need to take this one perfectly if they don't want to lose connection to the rifles you had. The qualifying is about to get underway, so before we go and see where things stand, let's quickly hop on board the GSSC Master MX-5 to get a driver's eye view from the new beginning Grand Prix Strecken. All right, we're in the GSRC MX-5, so let's do a lap around the Nürburgring. Haugkuk will probably be a very popular place for overtakes, but because it's so sharp, it presents some problems. Drivers often tangle with each other here, and outbreaking yourself during a pass attempt is pretty common. From there, you've got the Mercedes Arena. There's not a lot of heavy braking in this portion, though on rare occasions you do see side-by-side -side racing. Honestly, the most difficult part is this last chicane that leads you back to the main circuit. It's a little too fast for second gear, but kind of slow for third gear. Also, it rewards those who can really punch it and keep the car planted over the curbs. Finally, you get a little bit of a breather on your way down into Valvoline. Despite the fact that it's a decently long straight, overtaking into this plunging left-hander is pretty tough. You only brush the brakes, plus the racing line keeps you hugged to the left as much as possible on the exit. Ford is way slower, but also doesn't offer a good opportunity to get past your opponent. What you can do is make sure to get back on the gas as soon as the car will stick, because it's a pretty good run downhill towards Dunlop. This hairpin has a fair bit of banking, at least it's an unusual amount for a modern road circuit. But it's best to treat it like most hairpins. Square off the exit for a nice late apex and then apply the throttle. After that is the Schumacher S. With as little power as the MX-5 has, this is easily flat out. I wouldn't recommend going too wide, though it's not too terribly difficult. It'll just cost you quite a bit of time. As you drift the car back to the right side of the track, Michelin presents another chance to try and outbreak someone. But this left-hander is similar to Valvoline in that you don't want to track out too far in order to line up for Bilstein. You really don't need the brakes here except to hopefully rotate the car a little bit. But making sure you get a good run can make or break your race because other than the front stretch, this is the longest acceleration zone of the track. With the tighter NGK chicane and the draft, many pass attempts will happen here. You can take a lot of curb, but it'll hurt your ability to apply the throttle sooner. From there, Coca-Cola has a rather wide radius, and since you don't get much speed on your way towards it, it's mostly a matter of coasting through. Once again, mash that gas pedal down and try to carry your speed onto the front stretch. Many will try to position themselves to defend or attack into the first hairpin. But hopefully, if you've kept it all together, you've now finished a lap around the Nürburgring. That was one lap here at the new begin Grosse Prize Trekken in the Mazda MX-5. Now before we go to the points, I want to tell all the viewers that a countdown to green is sponsored by SimSport News. SimSport News is one of the leading sim racing news websites that covers all broadcasted series on iRacing and is run by Jacob Tufts and Luis Emerton. Now these two drivers are not just reporting, they're also racing as SimSport News Racing competes in many official top-level iRacing series. And for more information, please visit their website at simsportnews.com. Now let's go ahead and show you the point standings for the top five. First three drivers all have wins. Defending champion Sonny Ketchin has one, but above him is Yaomi Torres. He's got a pair. You know, another win goes to Marcelo Fajan down in third, 60 points out. Gianni Quintelier, he is solidly now on this graphic and had a career best second earlier this season at Bathurst. It was another career best for Nick Thyssen there. Last time out, he picked up a third place finish as he got his first podium in the MX-5 World Tour. There are two championships, though. We've talked about the pros. So let's look at the amateurs, Johan. Yeah, and the Amateur Championship is a Benelux battle basically all season with uh, Björn de Force leading it one last time around. He got a better deal. He finished in front of Stefan Svenov. And look at the gap between them. Only 19 points separating the two drivers. They have uh, quite a bit of gap to Derek Holland. Derek, of course, is from the US, but with a last name like that, he is an honorary <laughs> Benelux driver. He's currently sitting in P3. He's ahead of Jeroen Ursum. And behind him, Robert Wielinga, he gained seven positions last time around. He moves in the top five, and he's ready to move up further ahead. There you go. Always picking up new viewers, so let's take a look at the race details. This is season 17 of the MWT series, round five of our 11-round championship. 
venues will mirror uh, iRacing Advanced Mazda Cup Series, and the season finale will be a doubleheader. There are no drop races in this championship, so anything that happens on the track matters. However, the drivers get the benefit of free no-show compensations. That basically means that if a driver misses a race, he or she is compensated with a percentage of the driver's average race finish. There's also an attendance bonus for drivers, missing no more than three events. Now, the setups this race are open. They are slightly shrunk in the fuel tanks to make sure that there's one pit stop. The drivers will do 21 laps and there is no incident cap. But there's an MPI bonus rating for the drivers that do not score a lot of incidents during the season. As the blimp floated around the track, you could see how overcast the skies are here today. And it's gray on the track. Johan, let's take a look at the weather. Yeah, it is a beautiful German sun there. Uh, a very cloudy sky, 23 degrees Celsius. You can see there's 73 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. Very cool temperatures uh, uh, soup. That kind of means that the MX-5s will have a lot of grip here at the new beginning. At the same time, the wind, not really heavy, but say medium heavy. 16 kilometers an hour, 10 miles per hour. So the drivers might struggle a little bit with that as well, especially if those, that wind picks up a little bit once the racing gets underway. Should give the drivers plenty of confidence, though, when it comes to grip on the track. A relatively small field here by MWT standards, only 15 drivers here. But a lot of the big names are here. Sonny Kanchin, Yaomi Torres is here as well. Travis Wenke making a return. Yeah, and the driver that's currently sitting in pole position is Sonny Kenshin. We're looking at his nearest rival, Jaume Damasas Torres. He's currently sitting three tenths of a second, well, basically two and a half tenths of a second behind Sonny Kenshin. Both of these drivers have one more lap to go. They basically run the same point of the circuit if you uh, switch between them. They, of course, run in a close qualifying, so they have the whole track to themselves. They'll be coming across the start-finish line for the final lap uh, very soon. And the P3 is currently jean frère Penois. He's uh, actually quite close to Jaume, uh, Bill, and that's, well, surprising. jean is not one of the drivers that we usually see vying for a podium position, but his first qualifying lap is quite strong here. You know, it's fun. That's one of the advantages of doing a series where we get to see the same drivers come back week after week. It's fun to watch them progress, and Pinal really has been doing well racing out there in the 0-7 machine, sitting third in qualifying right now. He was a mid-packer at best, but now he's only... Well, it pretty much put in the same qualifying time as Taurus and just to tick off a catch and good for him. Yeah, that was something that we saw in practice as well and I hope that we can see that in the, in the race as well once it gets underway. That a lot of the top drivers, especially the pro drivers, were pace-wise so close to each other. Basically, six, seven cars within three, four tenths of a second. And if they can't show that in race pace as well, it's going to be very exciting. We're looking at Jeroen Oersen, but maybe it's a good idea to switch to Massa Torres, who's coming across the final corner as we speak. Let's see if he can get a pole position. Sonic Kenshin, however, is not going to complete his final lap. He's going to the pit probably had an off track somewhere in this lap as Jaume is coming across the start finish line he has to beat a 19.1 coming across the line that's only a 19.2 for him and he has to start p2 at best he did not improve ursum was able to get in a qualifying time he sits down in 13th well now he's in 14th as michael workman goes ahead and moves him down a spot there's michael got in his lap sitting in 13th yeah, going back to the pits to uh, get a little drink before the racing gets underway. On screen at the moment is the 55, Clifford Eben. He's the only driver at the moment that hasn't set a qualifying time. Because of that, he's uh, all the way down in P15. In practice, however, he was a little bit further up the grid. He was just, just outside of the top 10. So basically, expect Clifford to be uh, one of the podium contenders today in the amateur championship. Speaking of the amateur championship, one driver who won the championship, Kip Stevens, I see him entered in the event, but I don't think he's actually going to race with us as he did not put in any practice or a qualifying time. Just give him a shout out. Thanks for showing up anyway, Kip. Yeah, and talking about the amateur championship, we're looking at Christoph uh, Sanchez at the moment. Maybe we have to drop one position down because Steph Feinhoff, he has put in a blistering qualifying time. Uh, oh, 219.8. If he sits with that, let me just calculate. That math is going to go great. Nine tenths of a second in front of the nearest amateur driver. An immense gap for the Dutchman. 
who's sitting P7 overall, uh, and of course, pole position in the M Championship. Really good lap from him so far. He still has one more opportunity to go, one more lap to go. Let's see if he can actually improve that time. He only needs to win four hundredths of a second to win another position. The next driver will be five tenths ahead of him. That will be a very, very difficult challenge. And the top two drivers in the AM Championship are here. We're looking at Van Hoff and, of course, Bjorn de Forge, who sits about, oh, I think, about 19 points behind him, if I remember right. Stefanov now coming up to the NGK chicane. Very difficult chicane. This is one of the chicanes where you can really clobber the curb stones. It feels really good to do that as a driver. You feel like you're making progress. But I think that there, Stefanov got a little bit too uh, greedy over the curb stones, got an off track. He parks his car at the side of the road. Now, one of the good things, uh, hey, hey. Super Skip Stevens, he is out on track. He didn't set any practice time, any qualifying time. But it seems like Kip will drive with us, although he will start from uh, from the back of the grid. I don't think he's going to get this time in. All right, with Kip out there, he's not going to put in a qualifying time. We have 16 drivers. I'm going to take the top eight. Stefan, kind of change it up a bit. And there you have the Hoiskveld starting grid coming your way. Sonny Kenshin is going to be on the inside of row one. He's going to be flanked by um, Yami Torres. Row two is going to be Jean-Franc Pignon with Nicholas Berger. There's a new name we haven't talked much about. Outside of him, Travis Swenke and Christoph Sanchez go five and six. Stefan Wienhoff and Stefan Van Ostrel, seventh and eighth. The nine will be Jordi Fike, and he's being flanked by Jean-Marie Fougou. He starts just inside the top 10. During the fours, our championship leader in the M category, he starts P11. He's being flanked there by Derek Holland. Michael Wardman can be found on the inside of row 7. Just behind him, Jeroen Urs. And the last two drivers on the grid will be Clifford Evan and Kip Stevens without setting a quality time. Okay, we got all the business out of the way. Now we get down to the business of racing. Sonny Kanchen. Uh, Yaume Tor is up on front. They have been competitive all season long. They've gotten together a few times. Let's hope they can keep it clean today. Congratulations going on amongst the drivers. Best wishes from everybody. Round five, the MX5 World Tour Season 17. We have been around for a long time. You can hear the engine start to harmonize. Yeah, they're up the chicken steak. Coming behind the cows. The horses are out of the barn. It's the defending and four-time champion, Sonny Ketchin, out in front. The rookie challenger behind him is Torres. He's looking on inside of him. Boy, there is three wide behind. Can they get that sorted out? They do. Right behind Swinky. Berger gets the best of it. Pinho is going to try to fight him. He's not done yet. Christoph Sanchez looking on. Behind him, Nicolas Berger still side by side with Jean Frappenois. Still side by side as they reach turn three. Long corner to the right, but the next corner will be uh, to the left. Next one will be to the right. That's advantage for Nicolas Berger. Penois wants to go way off the track. That might give an opportunity to Christoph Sanchez behind him in P6. A lot of action going on between P2 P3. We can maybe go to a, a replay of that afterwards. P2 on the grid completely did not get away, and that caused a free wide moment. In the meantime, up front, it's Sonny Kenshin under heavy pressure. Bahamai uh, going towards the hairpin. Sonny Kenshin immediately defending very aggressively. They're completely diving to the inside, trying to block Gaume from making a move already. Like on, they touch each other! Breaking slightly to Nate Gaume. Hits Sonny Kenshin on the rear of his car. Both of them can continue, but that's the first contact today, Bill. Yeah. Yaume looked to the right. Sonny covered him. He went back to the left. Sonny covered that one, too. And then Yaume said, okay, give you a little hello. I'm here. Now he gets right up behind him. That's Yaume in the yellow car. Catch it up in front in the dark. Asbury Motorsports colored machine. Boy, look at the Spanish driver trying to find some way around. Cannot get it done. All field single file at the moment. Wachame is trying to find a way around it. Behind him, Trevor Swanky will try to uh, get that position, the P2 position, away from him. He's eating popcorn at the moment very loudly. As Wachame is getting a great run out of the Warsteiner curve as they're going through Alton Bogen here. He took the inside. Very great driving from him. Very aggressive. Late moves from both of them. It is now Sonny Kenshin blocking the inside as they go towards the chicane. Who will break later? It's Wachame who's breaking slightly later, but he doesn't have the inside and he has to get slot back in to the racing line. Travis Swanky had a great run through the chicane, however. Can he challenge a move now? On the ice, outside of the final corner, 
he will not make it stick. Nicholas Berger is looking feisty as well, trying to profit from Travis Swinky going on the attack. A pair of teammates doing really well back there in fourth and fifth. Berger and Pinyahu both were able to avoid the early lap chaos Sorry, that went on. Four a white. Lap. Four white in the middle of the field. Stefan van Opstel, Brian de Force, Clifford Eben, several drivers there. They were all caught up by Christoph Sanchez getting a slowdown penalty. <laughs> Four wide, three wide, going towards turn one. Will this go good? I think it will work Whoa. out in the end. That's how. Wow. That's Clifford Evan who went to the inside and got all of them except for the guy in front, Jordy Fike. Nice racing from the oh, and, 55. And the seven van Opso going around. He did the same thing as Stefanov did last time around. Just clubbed the curves down a little bit too hard. Spins it around. No damage. Just a little bruised ego. Uh, and as he continues on his way behind in the field, a good battle going on between Stefanov and Michael Wardman. Steph, of course, like I mentioned, he spun on that one. He's trying to fight his way forward. He already overtook Christoph Sanchez, is now trying to work his way past Michael Wardman as he goes side by side. That is going into turn five, turn six. He is now on the outside, will run down towards the hairpin. He is completely get pushed off the track there by Michael Wardman. That might have hurt the suspension a little bit. What a move from Stefanov there on the grass on the outside of Jeroen. He gets that position but loses one to Christoph in the meantime. A pass in the grass. They are still side by side each other coming out of the corner on the outside. It's Wortman. He's going to lose momentum. That's going to let Sanchez get the spot. Get him back into the mix. Here comes Venoff. Side by side through this very difficult corner. He understood off the track before. Almost steering into the back of Stefan of there. Michael Wortman just saw that in time. Steered away from him. Otherwise, it would have been a very nasty crash for both of them. We go back to single file. Let's see if Stefan of and Christoph Sanchez cannot drive away from the rest to the rear of Derek Holland. There are cars one through five up front, single file, six through ten, single file. And now these guys in the back have all got it sorted out a little bit. Let's look at the very back here. This is Kip Stevens who got the late start working on Jeroen Ursum. He's going to get that pass made. Move the former AMA champion up one position now, up into 14th. Yeah, Kip Stevens, of course, was didn't get any practice in, this, in front of him. Michael Wardman is getting his way by Stefanov again, side by side for the chicane on the outside. Stefanov has more momentum as uh, Michael Wardman's car went bunny hopping over the curb stones there. That will hurt him. Ooh, late move from Kip Stevens trying to get that position as well. These drivers are driving like it's the final lap of the race. Too. This is great entertainment, but this is not very quick driving for them. They lose a tremendous amount of time to the group that's being uh, shielded by Derek Holland in front of them. They get that sorted out a bit. Can we jump up to eighth position now? This is Bjorn de Forge in a battle with Jean-Marie Fugu. Looking on in the popcorn position, Derek Holland. And just to reiterate, the battle between Bjorn and Jean-Marie Fugu is the battle for P2 in the amateur category. Clifford Evan in front of them is the leader. He's trying to harass Jordi Fike for P6 overall, that will be. But here, this battle, Fugu and Bjorn de Force are fighting for the final podium positions in the M category for Nobody is separated in the front five. They all race within shouting distance to another. But this is the fun battle to look at right now. Evan was not able to put in a qualifying time. He started in 15th. He has cut that in half and then some as he races in 7th behind the Sheriff of Jordy Fike. Yeah, it almost seems like Clifford Happen is, is really finding some pace at the moment. He seems quite a bit quick. And then Jordi Fico actually goes onto the gravel on the exit of the of the hairpin. That will not help his acceleration coming out of that corner through the Michael, Michael Schumacher as she came here. You can just see the draft working his, his finger. Clifford Abbott very easily staying with Jordi Fike now. Mm, probably close enough to try and move there, but he thinks the better if it stays behind him. Now, Behind them, Bjorn de Force and Jean-Marie are still fighting. They're still on the draft, though. Derek Holland, he cannot fight with anyone at the moment. He's just hanging on for bare life. He doesn't want to lose the draft to the, uh, to the drivers in front. Riding on board, Jordi Fife looking back at the hard charger of Clifford Evan. Let's take a look at second position when we get a chance because I think that uh, Travis Swinky is about had enough of following behind Torres here. Yeah, I think so as well. I think the Gaume is trying everything he can 
to get back to the rear Sonic engine and really get the maximum effect of the draft. He had a great final corner though, Gaume. You were saying that, uh, Bill, and I, I saw how close Travis was. I was sure that he would try and move coming to turn one, but the final corner just really protected Gaume from any opportunity behind. And he stays in P2 for now, closing the gap around one car length to Sonny Kenshin in front of him. Now, this is a very difficult section, only one racing line. The cars are understeering very heavily here as you're trying to get as much speed as possible through these corners. Gaume is just navigating these tremendously. Yeah. He's cutting the, the gap by one, two car lengths more. He's right on the tail of Sonny Kenshin now. Really strong through the technical section was, was Taurus indeed. You can tell as he gets right up on the back of Kenshin and look at the gap that he put on Schwenke there as Travis had a hard time staying with him. Now one thing that I like about watching these two drivers fight is they both want to leave. They both are fighting for it. Uh, even at these beginning parts of the race you can see Gaume taking a little look on the inside of the hairpin there. He's the better of it. He doesn't go there. But Sonny Kenshin goes a little bit wider there. And the exit of the hairpin. We saw that last time around. Jordi Fike doing the same thing. Sonny Kenshin, I think it was just too little to give Halme an opportunity to put it side by side. As he goes for the Schumacher extricate. Luke Travis Swanky behind. He's getting the double draft at the moment. He's gaining, uh, gaining length very, very quickly. Yes. Uh, Kenshin's bad exit. And then and Torres had to pinch off his corner and exit as well. That allowed Schwenke to get right back up there. These five cars all staying close together. Shout out to Berger and Vignal back there. Those guys' teammates have been doing really well. Yeah, they're in a perfect opportunity. You just let the top three fight go. it out in front of them. They might win the race. Well, let's see what Gaume and Sonny are up to this time. On the outside, Gaume breaking for the chicane there. Travis Swanky, can he dive to the inside? No, very respectively uh, from Travis Swanky. He's just waiting there. How the battle in front of him plays out. This will hurt Gaume a little bit as he loses a car. Like Travis Swanky cannot profit, but make a move on the inside of the final corner. But like I said, Nicolas Berg and jean Frappenot, they don't really have to fight in this battle build. They just can wait there, just see what happens in front of them. Just pick up the pieces at the... Uh, at the time that the drivers in front will make a pit stop there will be a pit stop coming about anywhere between one third and two third racing up front very intense burger taking the wide look there oh, oh travis makes a mistake he'll oh, lose Kurt. one spot only one what an amazing save for Travis Swanky there. He just uh, went too hard over the curb stones. You have to. It's beneficial to hit the curb stone there. It helps rotate your car a little bit. But I think what he did was just hit it slightly too hard. And then it goes from rotation to over rotation. He almost lost control of it. But what a catch by Travis Swanky to not loop it around there. He actually well, saved it. Only loses one position and stays right in the battle with all the other drivers. He can just continue his race in P4. Gonna stay up front for a little, little while longer here and see what uh, Taurus does on the back of Kenshin. There is another battle though we're gonna check in on in a minute. That's Fike and Evan. That continues to rage. Fike being able to fend him off. But right now, let's stay up with the leaders a bit. Yeah, you can feel fireworks in the air, excitement in the air. These drivers are really going for it. You can see Gaume there taking a very late breaking look on the inside of the hairpin. They don't touch there. It was once again very close. Again, the left side tires off Sonny. And now they head down into 11, the left hander. And coming up a bit there is Taurus about a car length back. Now through 12, down the long back stretch, heading towards the chicane. This is where Sonny has gone defensive. He, he kind of has to. If you have one car on the inside of you going into the chicane, you kind of will lose the position. There's not really the opportunity to take more momentum around the outside. But Gaume is too far away to try and move there. Berger with a great run out of there. Really closed the gap up on Torres. Schwenke in fourth now wants that spot back that he lost after the mistake. For the first time, Ketchin has a little bit of breathing room. Yeah, but it is that final corner from, from Gaume that just really pays dividends. And you can see that on the back straight, well, also the draft will help a little bit there. He just wins back one, two car lengths. That's just an all, the, all, the, all the extra speed he needs to stay with Sonny Ketchin in the lead battle. Niklas Berger outbreaking himself slightly going into turn one. 
uh, was of course very close to Gaal on that start finish straight. It doesn't hurt him that much. In the meantime, Sean Frappenwell, he's the only driver that really hasn't changed position here. He's just very content, I would say, Bill. Just stay in P5 and see what happens in front of him. And watch, just back there watching and waiting. He knows that there's a pit stop to make. But of course, even though Sonny Kanchen is out in front, he's really good at calculating fuel, as is Travis Swanky. Not sure if that's really Taurus's strength. Yeah, it is difficult to calculate, though, with all the draft uh, laps that are happening at the yeah. moment. Because you're driving in a draft, it's more difficult to calculate what exactly will you be using if you're not in draft. If you are in draft, you, you have to predict what is going to happen when other people will make pit stops. So it's very difficult to pinpoint exactly how much fuel you need. Because these cars refuel so slow in the pit stop, it is a very important decision to make. It was a very difficult one to make. Now, if you can maybe uh, leave this battle for what it is and just drop back to the next battle, the one between Jordi Fike and Clifford App, and that battle has been, well, heating up a little bit, not between those two drivers, but a little bit because the drivers behind him are catching up, especially Bjorn de Force. He fought his way past Jean-Marie Fougou. He's now up to P8, P2 in the Amateur Championship. And it seems like he's closing down the deficit to Clifford Eben in front. And that's very important, of course. Uh, if we remember Stefanov, he's P2 in the Amateur Championship. He had pole position, but he had a mistake in lap one. So if Bjorn de Force can finish P2 or even P1, he will just consolidate a championship beat that he hasn't even increased it over Steph. Let's stay on this one for a while. I'll give you a yell as I'll keep one eye on the leaders. They race nose to tail, but passing is so hard. Let's give these guys a little bit of love. Yeah, no moves here in the chicane. All of them go back to single file racing there. One of the drivers is Clifford Eben getting a little bit loosely exit of the chicane. That might give Bjorn de Force a little chance. You take a look on the inside of the final corner. Things the better of it. Goes back to the racing line. But he will now be a little bit further out of the draft, uh, Clifford Eben. That will not help him. Bjorn de Force is right behind him as they come out of the final corner. He will now get a little slingshot as they come across the start finish lane. Look at the moment, he is now gaining. Now he has more speed than the car in front. Battle for the lead here in the Amateur Championship. He takes a look on the inside. Breaks a little bit later, but it's just too little, just a little overdrive that he has there to complete that move. He has to slump back in P2 there. Jordi Fike for the first time in many laps has a little bit of breathing room there, but that's not going to be long because Evan is coming. Yeah, and the thing for Bjorn is that he cannot only look forward. Behind him, Jean-Marie Fougou and Derek Holland are close in behind him as well. They're not putting him under that much pressure, but they're not far. And if he makes one small mistake, he will, instead of gaining one position, lose two of them. So it is a very difficult battle for Bjorn de Force at this moment. You have a five-car train up front. Then you have another five-car train back here, six through ten. And a few stragglers back in the back we'll check in on here in a minute. Yeah, there's actually a really good battle going on behind them. There's the one yeah. for P11 and Christoph Sanchez and Stefano. We might actually look at them. Now, these two drivers are extremely close. You might say this is a great battle. It's not really a battle, though, because these drivers, it seems more like it, and I would love to talk with them after the race, are working together. They are working together as much as they can to close down the gap to the drivers in front. Not only for Christoph, it will be very important to close down the gap to Jordi Fight, the pro driver in front of him, but Stefanov, he wants to go back to the P1 position he started racing in the M category and he is using Christoph Sanchez to the best of his abilities just slowly but surely they are uh, cutting down the deficit in front of them it's going with around two tenths three tenths per lap so it is it is happening but it's happening very very slowly Bill you know Stefan I want to talk about the car track combination here and I really I'm surprised oh look at this we have that battle going on I'm really surprised how much I'm liking this tar car track combination. It's almost a draft track, but passing is very difficult. Slow down penalty. Yeah, slow down penalty for Abbott. That's a race leader in the amateur category. And this will really hurt him. He just cut too much of the chicane. Now, the way that he immediately went to the inside there, Bill, and, and, and slowed down, that might not have been the best way. He could maybe have done it better on the start-finish straight, just going half throttle on the inside, letting everyone pass, because you can see immediately he is losing the draft to the drivers in front. And this will actually be an extra help as well for Christoph Sanchez and Stefano, who m now might use Clifford Eben as a sort of leapfrogging stone to get back to the four drivers in front of him. Yeah, if you can... If you can serve a slowdown, here comes our first pit stop. That looks like Jeroen Ursum coming in. 
If you can serve those the slowdown penalties in a Oh, and Clifford Abbott is You don't have to pay for it more than once. Oh, he's going to call it a day. Yeah, Clifford Abbott went for a little spin there. He would did the same thing as we saw several drivers do early in the race. Again, at turn three, just hitting the curb stance a little bit too hard, spinning it around. We go to a replay of the incident now. A lot of amateur drivers we saw that do uh, earlier. Uh, Stefan of most notoriously. Stefan van Opstel, of course, another amateur driver, but did the same there. Just losing control of the car. Now he loses two positions with that to Christoph and Stefan of. He's not without uh, without a shot, though, Bill. No, but he not brought it. A few seconds behind. Yeah, but he did bring it back out. I, I thought he was done, but he's going to continue to race, so good for him. Just keep swimming. Let's check back in on the leaders. Absolutely nothing has changed. Kanchen, Torres, Berger, Swenke, and Yao back there, all racing one through five. Swenke has made a couple stabs at Berger to try to get that podium spot back. They've all failed. And that's what, uh, Johan, again, just to drill down on that point about the car track combination. It's it's a draft track kind of, but passing seems to be really tough for these guys. Yeah, it's almost like the perfect combination. Yeah. You have long straights, but you also have uh, technical sections, especially that turn f one to turn four arena section on the beginning of the circuit where it is so just technical enough to really challenge the drivers, where it stretches it out enough and you really have to work to close it down again. And, well, you can see a lot of uh, drivers being caught out by that section, not only that, but it also means that you don't see continuous overtakes, and overtakes right. at the moment actually matter. We might see an overtake now for P4, that is Jean-Fran Penoir. He's putting pressure on Travis Swanky in front of him. Travis had a horrible final corner, and Jean-Fran on the outside, as they go towards turn one, it's a 180-degree corner to the right, so that's not the place that you want to be in, but breaking later might help staying there. No, he cannot break late enough and stay on the outside. Travis Swanky fends enough, he stays in P4. It seems like the straightaways are just long enough to almost let the driver slingshot you. It gets you there, but man, it's hard to finish the job. Great racing going on. They continue to race one through five. Pit stops are coming, and that could really determine you. Whatever you want to do, you don't want to lose your. You don't want to lose the draft. You want to be able to at least come out close to where you were racing before. Absolutely. So if I was any of these drivers, I would just stay uh, out as long as possible to see uh, that you can use as much draft as possible. Now, Clifford Eben was one of the first drivers uh, coming in for the pit stop. He's currently sitting in the pits at the moment. Kip Stevens is our first retiree of today. He had some connection issues, so he had to throw, out, uh, throw his head into the ring for the race today here at the Nürburgring. And the battle for uh, P1 is still going on. We're looking at Jaume de Massas Torres. Lap 9 of 21 laps. We're almost at the halfway point of the race. So I would imagine that these drivers are thinking about their pit stops, that they are coming in soon. When you want to... When you're about to come in for your pit stop, you want to move through this pack a little bit. You don't want to come in as the P5, the last driver in this pack. You want to lead it. So I would imagine some of these drivers fighting for a move forward and, uh, and really put, get the advantage, uh, the first advantage in their pit strategy like that. And if it is a disadvantage to lead the pack, then that should really hurt drivers like Kanchen and Fike, who have been both out in front of the, I guess, the peloton, if that's if I can... I think that's what they call it in bicycle racing. Those guys have been out in front the whole way. A little gap is starting to appear between Travis Swanky and Nicholas Berger at the moment, it almost seems like. Around eight tenths of a second. So Travis Swanky now has a few corners, uh, especially in the technical infield section at the beginning of the track, that he just has to close it down, make sure that he doesn't lose the draft to the top three in front. Jean Frappino is probably seeing that as well. And with that, wants to get by Trevor Swanky as soon as possible. Last time around, Trevor Swanky did a 2.19.7. The three drivers in front all did a 2.19.4, except Sonny Kenshin with a 2.19.6. So he has to pick up the pace a little bit if he doesn't want to lose connection with the rest. I have, wor I have worried that that was going to happen, but but it, it hasn't yet. Let's go back and look at uh, this, this battle here in eighth spot. And this is the battle that's happening behind the... Uh, or this is basically the battle for P2 in the amateur category. Yeah. Derek Holland is trying to take that away from Jean-Marie Fogu. Here in the infield section, it's very difficult to overtake. And at outside line four, uh, Derek Holland didn't pay dividends. You can see that because of the inferior racing line both of them had to take because of the battle, they're losing connection to Derek... Uh, sorry, Bjorn de Force immediately, who's just trying to draft away with Jordi Fike. 
uh, from these two drivers behind. Now, let's actually look at the gap between Christoph Sanchez. Last time around, Christoph Sanchez was a little bit slower together with Stefanov. So they're not closing down as quick as they did earlier in the race. And Christoph Sanchez and Stefanov have really to pick up the pace a little bit, a few more tenths per lap if they want to fight for that uh, uh, P6 position overall. I've been watching those guys back in 10th, and they've been very well behaved. Let's stay on there. So you see the Vainhoff behind, almost just happy to stay there. Not putting any pressure on Sanchez at all. Yeah, I think that uh, Stefanov just wants to stay there as long as possible. Now let's go maybe to P2, because the battle between Jaume Damasas Torres and Nicolas Berger was heating up as we were going there. However, Nicolas Berger has lost a little bit of touch. Uh, but this battle is heating up. You could see Nicolas Berger putting a lot of pressure on Gaume in the infield section. It didn't work, however, and Gaume is responding with that by putting pressure on Sonny Kenshin. He hasn't been this close as they're reaching the chicane section of the track in uh, well, the last few laps. And he's actually coasting a little bit before they go to the braking zone, just not trying to make a move at this point of the race, just saving some extra fuel. So both of them will stay out for another lap. Let's see if one of those drivers behind him come in. No, all of them will stay there stay out for another lap. In the meantime, you can see Trevor Swanky has found connection again with the rest. So no break away from uh, P4. Uh, the whole top five stays together. Swanky had a really good run through the last chicane, picked up two or three car lanes. Now you yeah, got to worry that the French driver can hang on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Jean Frappenau is falling a little bit away. In the meantime, Derek Holland is making his pit stop. He's kind of the first driver to make a pit stop that was fighting uh, with, uh, with a lot of other drivers. So let's see where he comes out, uh, where he will shake out when all the pit stops are said and done. Michael Warpen is also coming in for his first pit stop. Ursum, the only lead lap car that has made a stop, but he was racing at the back of the pack. I don't expect him to be able to leapfrog these guys. Holland, a veteran of this series. Had a great run last night. They raced on the very same track, the very same cars in the uh, Advanced Mazda Cup. We carried here on GSRC on Friday nights or Saturday mornings, I guess, depending on your location on the globe. Yeah, that's, of course, very nice that those, those races are simultaneous, both in the Advanced Mazda and in the MWT. It just really helps get some extra practice in, some extra race practice uh, and, a, and a heavy pressure, heavy, heavy battling, of course, to really prepare yourself for a race like this in MWT. You can see basically the whole race long. This is, doesn't feel like a typical race, though, for me. It almost feels like the drivers are fighting more than we expect them to do in the first stint. You see a lot of drivers just taking looks on the inside, and especially maybe not in the top five, but behind them, a lot of moves happening for positions there. Uh, so it's a little bit different than we usually see. Schaume Damasa Stories once again is just closing down to Sonny Kenshin, especially in this section of the track. Turn 10, turn 11, the Warstein Kuver. That's where he really catches up to the Australian. So they're coming out of it, however, and go towards the final chicane. He's losing a little bit of the connection, though, and Nicholas Berger is trying to catch up. Spoiler alert, if you don't want to hear the results of that race from last night, cover your ears for the next five seconds, starting now. Sonny Kenshin, whoa, careful through the chicane there was, of course. Sonny Kenshin was able to get the win, and he had an easy time of it, having a much harder time of it now. Okay, uncover your ear. Pit stops were made. Holland and Workman both come out. Holland comfortably ahead of Workman. Holland racing in 12th. Yeah, and Jordi Fike is the next driver that will come off here. Spits up. I think Jordi Fike, that will be an interesting driver because he was in the same pack as Derek Holland was. So let's see if those two drivers will be together uh, with each other once Jordi Fike comes out. Behind him, Christoph Sanchez and Stefanov are coming in for their pit stop as well. And let's see, these two drivers, of course, were basically drafting with each other yep. all the time. I think Stefanov will have a very short pit stop compared to uh, Christoph Sanchez, who did all the heavy lifting, trying to break the wind flow in front of him. Uh, let's see if Stefanov, because of that, actually can catch up with Jordi Fike in front of him, because he has a shorter pit stop. Both of the drivers are standing still. Stefanov didn't get a good uh, braking momentum there. He had a little hitch before he finally got his car stationary. That might have cost him half a second in the pit lane. Holland. Fike is getting away again. Holland is through pit entrance. Fike is rolling. Here comes Holland. These guys were racing together. We thought that maybe Holland might be able to jump him with a faster time. But Fike gets out well out in front. Can he get it revved up? 
Holland gets around both uh, Sanchez and Dean Hoff. Yeah, but this is really important though because Derek Holland is 100% a stepping stone now for yep. Christoph Sanchez and Stefanov behind. And once those other drivers in that second group, the four Jean Marie Fugou, will make uh, their pit stops as well, I think that will basically go from a four car to a six car battle for P6 overall and for the amateur victory here at the Mobile Good job from those guys, from Sanchez and Vinov back there, working together and getting themselves back in the hunt. Top four cars now in a train. John Frank Vignot trying to hang in there if he can. Yeah, he's still within a second, but it is getting closer and closer to above one second. And then it's going to be hard for the French driver to, uh, to hang on. Now, one good thing for Jean Ferrat, he basically has been P5 all race long, and that means that he could probably save a little bit more fuel than the drivers in front. That might have helped him with the pit stop. Sonny Kenshin settling a dummy there. <laughs> Three drivers are falling for it or just plan to come in for the pit stop. Nicholas Berger, Travis Frankie, and Jean Fampenois. But out there are Jaume de Massa Torres and Sonny Kenshin. They go at it for another lap. Oh, that's very late braking. That's a crash in the pit lane. Jean Fampenois completely misses his braking point. Slams the wall. Barely affords Travis Frankie there. What a great job of sacrificing himself. He's got to, I imagine, pick up a. A, a speeding penalty on that one, but he avoided Swanky, turned it to the left. Watch this, so that he doesn't get in the car in front of him. What happened here? I think he was just looking at the cars in front and you know, maybe changing some settings on the steering yeah. wheel last moment. Completely misses break, but like you say, great avoidance from him to not hit Trevor Swanky. But I think there will be more than just a pit stop for the French driver. He will have some damage as well. Yeah, my guess is he was he was busy changing knobs there and doing some settings. All right, the view the force is also in for his pit stop. Let's keep a half an eye on him as well. Both drivers are getting away. Great pit stop for uh, Travis Swanky there. Yeah. He wins a lot of time on Nicholas Berger. Jean Frampenois is still sitting in the pits. He's losing a lot of time. Now he gets underway again. I think that was the speeding penalty you were mentioning, Bill. He gets underway just in front of Bjorn the force. That will cost him a lot of time. Let's see Jordi Fike coming across the start finish line now. He's side by side with Bjorn the, for Bjorn the force who will win that battle. I think it will be Jordi Fike by a hairline there. Behind them, though, the battle for Christoph Sanchez, Stefan of Derek Holland, they didn't get the connection that Stepping Stone that no. I imagined. You know, I think it might have been just a just a, a bad stop on the on the case of Holland compared to the other guys doing well. And just to drill down a little bit on the uh, Schwenke and Berger situation, uh, Berger was about six or seven seconds longer cone to cone. He was actually faster in his box. Schwenke has crushed Berger's lost, lost touch now. Absolutely. Now in the back uh, of the field, Jeroen Oersum is coming in for a second pit stop. I don't know exactly why that is happening. Maybe he had some problems with his car underfueled at the beginning. At the meantime, Gaume de Masastorius and Sonny Kenshin are both coming in for that pit stop. Well, their job got a little bit easier with the mistake that uh, Pignon made and then the horrible stop from Berger. They really don't have to worry about Travis Swenke right now. Now, if if leading the pack means anything, then you got to figure the Taurus is going to get out of here faster. But that you got to be able to calculate the fuel as well. I really think Taurus put the pressure, turned the pressure off. Oh, oh he does this. Ah, yep. uh, that's going to cost him some valuable seconds there, Taurus. Maybe all the, I, I think that costs him more than he gained with being P2 yeah. all days long. Let's see. I go as soon as Sonny goes. Go now. Oh, he's going to wait. Oh, that's going to cost him, I think, two, three seconds as he gets going again. This might actually help if Travis Swanky puts himself right between them. Like I said, uh, he might use it as a leapfrog for Stepping Stone to go forward. But Travis Swanky just comes out behind Gaume. That will hurt him, I think, because Travis will fight Gaume for that P2 position. And that could mean that Sonny can just drive away from them. Ooh, Sonny Kenshin is going wide there. In the exit of turn two keeps it in a straight line, though. He's having to get used to two new tires there. Eight laps to go and an interval of about three seconds between the leader and Taurus. So once again, pit stops are the difference. A mistake from Taurus, Canton doing what he does. Looking at the times, I see nothing to be alarmed about from Sonny's time. It seems legitimate. 
So now, can so, sorry, you, you, uh, go ahead. Yes, yeah, little spin for Jean Marie Fougou in the first corner. He just came out of his pits. Uh, that was the first pit stop from the French driver, just hitting the curbs down very hard. Basically, what we saw Trevor Swanky do at the beginning of the race as well. Jean Marie, just here, you can see as we go on board with him, just hitting the curbs on the inside, on the right here, very hard, spinning him around. Once your car gets going there, you, it's so difficult to catch it. A few meters li later, yeah, he immediately spun again. Yeah, I he think he might yeah. have some. I think he might have some damage because of that, because he spun two more times in the next few corners. It for goes from bad to worse. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Poor bad luck for Jean Marie, but uh, let's see where it goes on in the battle for the lead. Sonny Kempson, he's. Oh, Jeroen Oersem having some problems as well. Jeroen! Jeroen Oersem was standing still at his pit stop for a long time. He got going again. Uh, he had some... Uh... It almost looked like destructive tendencies in the pit stop. He, he hit the inside wall, one of those uh, petrol, uh, petrol stations on the right. Okay. It looks like it's race over for Jeroen Oersem. But like I was saying, in the meantime, the battle for the lead, Sonny Kenshin is still way out in front. The gap between him and Damasus Torres as they come over start finish line, three and a half seconds. And all because Jaume missed there his pit style behind him. Trevor Swanky is putting some pressure on the Iberian driver in front of him. Not going side by side there, but he's very close and Jaume will know that. Well, it's interesting though, when you think about it, if we think about it a little bit farther, it was... Kanchen, Torres, and Swinky, they were nose to tail before the pit cycle opened up. Swinky came in, had a legitimate stop. Torres had a mistake, still got out in front of Swinky, but somehow, once again, <laughs> when it comes to pit stops, nobody's better than Sonny Kanchen. Boy, to be fast and then good in a pit stop as well. It's like a pretty girl who can sing. Do you really need to be both? He really got everything there, and it's really paying dividends for Sonny Kenshin here in the race. Now, um, this battle, of course, is, is very exciting between Jaume and Trevor Swanky, but maybe we can put some focus on... Uh, we can maybe stay looking at this, but I want to talk about Björn de Force and Stefanov. Those are P1 and P2 in the M Championship. They're driving P7 and P9 overall. The gap between them at the moment is around four seconds. However, Stefanov, last time around, last lap around, seven tenths quicker than Björn, Björn de Force in front of him. I think that it will take around five laps before Stefanov will be right on the rear of his Belgian rival and that will be for the victory in the M Championship and I also think for the lead in the championship so a battle to keep our eye on as the race, uh, race is going to the end stages. Well with seven to go and John Murray Fugu taking his car into pit lane right now there's 12 cars out on the track how about we pay a little bills for trips back markers shout out what do you got there? Well, let's go to P12 first. Michael Wardman, he's one of the drivers that had a lot of excitement at the beginning part of the race. There's a little bit in no man's land at the moment. He's driving there in P12. He's trying to follow Stefan van Opstel. Stefan was one of the drivers that uh, got caught out at the curb stand on the inside of turn two, spun it around, trying to do a recovery base. Currently in P11, Derek Holland. He's our P3 driver in the M Championship, just inside the top 10, winning two positions so far in the race. And he is behind Stefano. If we just mentioned him, he's still following the rear of Christoph Sanchez, trying to follow the draft. A little bit of extra speed doing so. Christoph Sanchez in front, dropping two positions since his race started. He is driving now in P8. Björn de Force, we mentioned him before. He's the leader in the M Championship today. And also the lead leader in the M class today here at the Nürburgring. He's driving P7 overall. He's not that far behind Jordi Fike, who was a little bit further down at the beginning of the race. Now all the way up to P6, winning three positions so far this race. And let's name one more driver as he's not that far in front of Jordi Fike. That's Jean Frappenois. He, of course, had some trouble before uh, he came into the pits. He's still going, however. He drives P5 overall, 20 seconds behind Sonny Kenshin. And there's Trips back marker shout out that took us through most of the field. Let's go ahead and finish it up. How about fourth position, Nicholas Berger? He's got six and a half seconds to get to Swanky. About seven tenths of a second on the French driver who's running in behind him. No, about ten seconds. Sorry, I missed a, missed a digit. Let's go up to second position, our best battle on the track. This is Torres with Swanky right behind him. And, of course, these guys are about three seconds behind Sonny Kanch. Now, I was mentioning that battle between Björn de Force and Stefanov. I mentioned that Stefanov won seven tenths of a second the previous lap. Last lap, however, 
It was only four tenths of a second. So Stefanov, with that kind of pace difference, will, it will not be enough for the best driver to close down the gap to Björn before the race is over. Like we mentioned, six more laps to go. There's a lot of opportunities to win time, a lot of opportunities to lose it as well. Better for P2, however. Look at that. Travis Schwenke to taking a look on the inside of Jaume uh, Torres there. Just selling a dummy, going back to the racing line as he reached the corner. Yeah, I think Travis is smart enough to know he doesn't have the pace to drive away from Taurus. Maybe he's just trying to feel it out. Now, usually I would think that you want to, like, wait till the last lap to make your pass. But with passes being so difficult here, my gut tells me if you have the opportunity, Johan, you, you better take it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Track position seems to be key this ra uh, on this track, this race so far. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see Trevor Swanky just try it in one of the next laps. Just see if he can surprise Jaume. Jaume is a very good defensive driver. We've seen it multiple times in this season. And I think by just trying a move and see if you can surprise him uh, by a late braking maneuver that's really uh, how you get that p2 position away from him we could see how make a little mistake as well a few corners ago there was on the exit of the warsteiner curve he took a really uh he just understood of the track took a line through the gravel and if he just keeps making mistakes like that trevor swanky at one point would just say i'm gonna get it now and just dive it to the inside try to get a p2 position away Hey, we haven't seen many passes. Maybe get a replay of this one. Tenth position, Stefan Van Obstrel, who we really haven't talked very much about, just made a pass on Derek Holland. Not sure if we're going to be able to see it or not. But yeah, it's happening passing is so difficult. Here we go. Yeah, well, he's basically showing the leaders how it's supposed to be done. A great move from uh, Stefan Van Obstrel there. He's, of course, one of the drivers that's trying to recover. Had a great run out of the Warsteiner curve. Used the draft. Got to the inside, not a whole lot of defending from Derek Holland as well, and just got by. And uh, well, as the race is going, however, Derek Holland got that position back as they went to turn one. Yeah, he's now in front of them again. I thought that uh, Stefan Opsen would actually drive away, but it seems like Derek Holland is the selling his height very expensive there, just really fighting for that P10 position. We have a special honor every night in the advanced Mazda Cup. You, the queen of the ball goes to the driver that puts on the best show. Derek Holland was our first winner of that one. He's trying to follow it up here today by fending off Van Opstra, who's very quick, but trying to work. Van Opstra qualified in eighth. Let's see. Steph has got to run here. So he tries it one more time. Going to peek on to the right. Dives it in and can't finish it. Look at Holland fight back on the outside. Put it out on the sand. Get a little drive off of there. Try it again next lap. <laughs> Great fighting between the two. And this, of course, is for P10. This is a little bit further down the grid, but even even though this is a great battle to watch, but a good battle to watch as well is the one for P2. We've only well, five, four laps to go, basically, before the race is over. Jaume is still in front of Trevor Swanky. as they come around the final corner at the moment. Um, the gap between Jaume and Sonny Kenshin is not really decreasing, also not really increasing. It's just fluctuating by a few tenths of a second uh, every lap. Although the last two laps, Jaume is winning a little bit, but not enough to close down the gap to Sonny Kenshin before the race is over. Trevor Swanky winning a lot of speed there. Just thinking the better of it, you could see there the extra speed that he has. He didn't have the commitment to make the overtake. He had extra speed, Bill. But he just didn't go to the inside to actually finish the deal. It was just basically showing his muscles a little bit and showing that Jaume, like, hey, I'm here, I'm still here, and I'm quick as well. Might be a little different philosophy that you have on with four to go than you do with one to go. Lord knows that Taurus has had his, taken his share of elbows from MWT drivers this season. Yeah, so... From, uh, from these guys. He's been bumped around a few times. Left traffic car in front of them as well. The Jean-Marie Fogu. He will probably get out of the way of these three drivers once they come across him. That might actually give Sonny Kenshin and also uh, Jaume a little bit of draft as they go over this, uh, this very long straights. As they go through the hairpin, you can see there Jaume just taking way too much speed in that corner. And the steering of the track going through the gravel, that will not help his lap time. Travis Swanky is right behind him as he goes through the Schumacher S chicane there. 
Less than half a car length. He will now dive to the outside. This is maybe the moment that we were waiting for. A small mistake from Gaume. And Trevor's pouncing on that. So he is on the outside. Breaking slightly later. But just not enough momentum to seal the deal there. Gaume back to the racing line. He covers it to stays in P2. There are no teams in the MX-5 World Tour. But there are, you know, there are associations. And Asbury Motorsports, there's no team championship. But certainly team drivers racing. Tor is new to the series, got to be thinking, how many of these Asbury guys are there? He got together a few times with Kanchen. Here comes the pass. Pajan got together. He is an AM uh, Asbury Motorsports driver. And now Schwenke gets the move. He takes oh, it in too no. deep. He comes back and he gets hit. And then T-Bone. Yeah, he's waiting for uh, Gaume, it seems like. It seems like he knows that he was uh, responsible for that. But Gaume looks very heavily damaged after that crash. Crabbing over the track. That's race over for the Spaniard. We go to a replay of that incident. What exactly happened there? Well, one of the big things was that Schaumann didn't defend the inside. He just stayed on the outside. Once that happened, he knew to break a little bit earlier, try to cross back, take that position back. Uh, he also just cut in very quickly on the apex there, as you can see. Yeah. Travis Frankie was there. Got spun around, and that second hit just killed the suspension of Schaume. That was race over. I want to be a little bit cautious about making calls here on air, but honestly, I, from that look, Travis has to put the car somewhere. So I don't really know yeah, if that really was on him. Yeah, he at least uh, completely ground down to a hold, it seemed like, to apologize and let yeah. Gaume get that position back. But once Gaume got going again, or couldn't get going again, he put the throttle on. Now, this might actually give an opportunity to Nicholas Berger, who's right behind uh, Travis Swanky now, so we, the battle for P2 is still going. There's, there's a little match between the two drivers as they reach turn one. The battle is still going, but Gaumi has been replaced by Nicholas Berger, who's now in a po uh, fighting for a podium position. Swanky's car might be wounded a little bit. Certainly may not have the straight line speed after nosing into the, the driver's side door of Torres. Three to go. Ooh, yeah. almost losing control. Travis Swanky there on the exit of turn four. He can just barely control it, and that will lose him a lot of time to Nicholas Berger. Nicholas, who almost lost connection in the infield section, immediately catches up again. And this might be the opportunity that Nicholas needed, because now there's a bunch of long straights coming. And it will be easier for Nicholas to stay with Travis in, uh, in front in the draw. Yeah, Berger's going to get him now. He's going to see if he wants, he's going to wait as they work through 11 down into 12 right now. Might have an opportunity into the chicane. Let's see what type of drive Travis gets out of that corner. Pretty good. Boy, he burgers a long way back. Not sure if he's going to get there before they get to the chicane. Yeah, the good thing, though, for Nicholas is he doesn't have to do it here. If he just stays close through the chicane, he could try and move going into turn. He waits. Now into 16. This kind of sweeping right hand hairpin. You go around, you go around, you go around, you come out. Now you want to get a good drive down the front straight. Make a chance, pass into Okayama. Two car lanes back. Not going to get there. One car lane back. Swanky defends. He's going to peek. Berger dives it in. Swanky closes the door. Very late move there from Nicholas Berger. He tried to sell the dummy that he was going to take it around the outside, but on the last moment, he sent it to the inside. Great a little bit later, when he eased off it, it was just all damage done. And Travis Frankie had the inside of the corner, but Nicholas Berger wants that P2 position, that's clear. And he's not waiting till the last lap as well. He just wants that track position as soon as he can get it. Now, maybe you can go back as well to P6, because I was mentioning uh, Björn de Force and Stefanov. Uh, with Christoph Sanchez in the middle as well. That group of drivers has completely caught up to each other. So the car in the middle, that's a pro driver. We don't have to focus on that one, but the two drivers in front and in the back, they are fighting for the lead and for the victory in the M Championship. That did tighten up what we thought might happen. These guys have been racing together all race long, and now it's a three-car battle. Let's go back up to P2 right now. I think Berger's got to run. See if he's going to force the issue. He's right behind him. Great it's a good drive out of here. Here we go. 
Yeah, trying to take a look on the outside. Travis covers that, then goes to the inside. As they reach turn 10 here, both under breaking. Travis Swanky takes a lot of momentum. You can see Nicholas Berger just very cautious there, breaks a little bit too much. And that gives uh, the position back to Travis Swanky. I was always thinking that Nicholas Berger had that sealed on that round two of this battle in this lap as they go towards the chicane it is Trevor Swanky defending the inside Nicholas Berger has to go around the outside now the long side but he has a nose length ahead who will break later and is Trevor Swanky who breaks later side by side hit each other once again contact between these two drivers no significant damage though the most significant damage that is being done is Nicola Berger losing quite a bit of time to uh, Travis Swanky few car lengths between the two now boy you can see Swanky really confident under braking as he takes it in able to blow it up and get to the apex Ooh, sorry uh, Bjorn the force completely messing up the chicane oh. but you still in the replay apologies for that Nicholas Berger there with that move on the outside on Travis Swanky Stays the same there with Travis Swanky in P2. Then as we go live, the battle, the lead battle with the, in the M class I was talking about. Stefanov is on the inside of Bjorn de Force. Bjorn de Force was being overtaken by Christoph Sanchez in the chicane. Uh, had to take a horrible line there. That cost him a lot of speed through that corner, both under breaking into turn one. Bjorn de Force back to the lead there. So my memory, man, look at my notes. It was Sanchez who was ahead of Vainhoff for most of the race, right in that in that battle. And now they're now he's going to get he's going to pick up the pass made here. Still side by side though for the lead. Stefanov now will have the outside. This will be a difficult one. Yeah, he has to uh, give that position back, but getting the crisscross back on him now on the outside as they go towards turn five. He has more momentum. There. And they're breaking still side by side. There's nothing between these two drivers on the outside. Is Stefanov now the position? The corner will cross back to him. He should have that position now. The beautiful still hanging there on the outside as they go towards the hair. We can stay up. We can stay on this one, can't you? Just going through 11 right now. He's got a ways to go. We can stay on this battle. This is heating up on this last lap. Yeah, it's beautiful once again in front of Stefanov now. Now it's single foul again. This is a long run down towards turn 10. And Stefanov will need that draft to close down the gap. That settles down. Our leader just getting to the chicane right now. It's been a good run for Sonny Kanchen. Wire to wire, he had to work it, though. He had battles from Torres, Schwenke back there as well. But now as he gets to the final corner, sweeping right-hander comes around. It's the MX-5 World Tour Season 17, round number five from the Nürburgring. Sonny Catch gets the win. Let's go to Schwenke as he tries to fend off Berger. Yeah, it was a little move from Berger in the chicane, but he couldn't get it done. Trevor Schwenke will finish in front of him, get P2 in the end. So if we go back to Bjorn Force and Stefano, oh. Bjorn Force messing up the chicane once again. And that might be a slowdown penalty for the Belgian. Because he completely missed the corner there. Will it actually be a slowdown penalty? Yep. It seems like it. Yes, he gives Stefanov the position there. So Stefanov in the last corner of the race, he completely fell down to last place in the amateur championship. He fought his way back to the victory here at the Nürburgring. Great race from Stefanov there. The force came over and made sure he announced that he did not want to get rear-ended. Finishing up, 11 cars on the lead lap. Derek Holland is going to come across in 10th. And the last car out there is going to be Michael Workman, who picks up an 11th place finish. Congratulations to him finishing on the lead lap. The racing is over here in Germany. The broadcast is not. We'll take a short break. We'll come back and run down the entire finishing order. Talk to some of the drivers before we put a lock on the gate. Don't go far. You're watching GSRC on IESN.
Welcome back to the Heisenfeld Wrap-Up Show, streaming your way on the Global Sim Racing Channel via the iRacing Esports Network. You know, Heisenfeld solutions currently are being used by countless professional teams and drivers, and it's now within budgetary reach of all without having to compromise on realism or engineering value. They offer advanced vehicle software and hardware able to simulate any combination of race car and track. Be a better race car driver and get in touch today at hoisingbell.com. And now let's give you the finishing order. Sonny Ketchum goes wire to wire, picking up his second win of the season. Travis Swanky right behind him, his teammate for second. Nicholas Berger was looking on the back of Swanky, could not get it done. He'll have to settle for third. John Franco back there in fourth position. Jordy Fike raced in sixth for most of the race, leading the train of, train of five cars. Then when there was a problem to Torres, Jordy Fike was able to vulture a spot up into the top five. Good job for the Sheriff. Christoph Sanchez will get sixth position. Steph Wienhoff, a great run into seventh. Bjorn DeForce in eighth, rounding out your top ten. Stefan Van Ostro, who we saw making the pass on Derek Holland late in the race. Johan, you get the rest. Yeah, Michael Warman is the last driver on the lead lap. He comes home P4 in the amateur category. P11 overall, Jean-Marie Fugou. He is one of the few drivers, one of the five drivers that had some problems out there in the Nürburgring. He's classified P, uh, P12 just in front of Gaume de Massastorius. Great race for him, fighting for the lead, but wasn't meant to be after the contact with Sonny Kenshin. Uh, that was the race over for Gaume. Jeroen Usum classified in P14. Clifford Eben, one of the drivers that was fighting for the lead in the, uh, for the victory in the M category as well. He's only classified P15 in the end, and Kip Stevens, he had a horrible day, couldn't get any practice in, in the end, finishes in P16. All right, I get the honor of talking to our race winner, Sonny Kanchin. Congratulations, you got one one last night, you got another one here today, but this one was a little tougher. Hi, Sub. Yeah, this, this definitely was uh, tougher. Uh, very good morning to you, and um, uh, Joe, as well as Johan there, that's good to see. Um, pretty, I'm pretty pumped, actually. Um, uh, wasn't I was from the from last uh, race win? I was just uh, too excited, so I haven't had much sleep, uh, but um, used to it. So, <laughs> so here I am. Um, it was very tough uh, compared to the last race because this is longer as well as there's strategy involved and uh, faster guys. Full credit to Torres uh, for keeping up with me as well. Explain to me why. It seems to be so difficult to pass here on this track. I, the, the the straightaways look long enough that you could get a run, but man, it's it's tough. Yeah, it's it's really tough to uh, pass this this track, especially around the corners. What I notice is if you defend, if you're a good defender, um, you you want to make sure you cover the inside. Um, so it's really tough to pass someone on the outside. So um, except on the straight, of course, you you position your car to defend. And um, and then uh, you also make sure that uh, you know when you, how you, how to take the corner. So uh, also that checking the tire and fuel at the same time, uh, everything everything counts uh, till the end. And that's what happened to me. I was I was almost out of fuel um, soon after pits with nine laps to go. Um, um, I took a little chance. Um, so but I was out of draft. So my strategy then was to not use full power until I'm deadly sure the last couple of laps that I can make it. That's that was my strategy in the beginning. Um, again, going back to defense, uh, defending. I didn't allow Torres to take advantage of me on the inside, so I was defending hard. Um, so uh, th that's how it goes. Well, yeah, it was clear you were protecting that position. All right, let's look ahead. I know you like to put in practice, but we're going to spa. Do you really need to practice for spa, or or, or can you do that one in your sleep? <laughs> Uh, uh, well, um, it, it, it's uh, still a little bit of practice uh, required. I mean, with the new, with the new uh, uh, build updates to the, um, okay. to the engine, you know, everything's um, uh, quite different with the setups. You know, I've got a tweak here and there, so practice is still needed. Uh, but spy is going to be another thing. So um, uh, hopefully, uh, there's a bit of luck as well as skill there. <laughs> so it's going to be a little easier to get a pass there at Spa. Hey, it's fun to watch your race. Congratulations. You pick up your second win of the season. Good luck to you the rest of the way. Thank you, Soup. Uh, wonderful um, having you guys again. I'll talk to you guys again and uh, catch you next time. Have Four-time MWT champion Sonny Kanchin gets the win here. Johan, who you got? I got uh, the other winner today here at the Nürburgring, Steph Feinhoff. He comes in the booth to talk with us. Uh, Steph, what an 
amazing race it must have been for your perspective. You had your spin in lap one, you were all the way on the back and you fought back and how you win at the end, how does it feel? I don't think we're getting stuff at the moment. Tell you what, let's 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 take him out for a second. We'll bring him back. I'll talk to yeah. uh, I'll talk to Travis Swenke, our third place, our second place finisher, and then we'll bring Steph back in. Travis, you got a copy? Yeah, sure do. Oh man, what a! I don't know about you. I don't know if it's fun to drive, but it is fun to watch racing here uh, on the Grand Prix circuit at, at the Newburgh Ring. Man, it you can almost make a pass. Uh, almost yeah <laughs> almost it's, it's definitely hard to set one up and then when you do you're always uh open for the uh the undercut or you know whatever else because you have to open yourself up in that next corner so it's a very interesting track for sure you had yourself in third then you made a little mistake luckily it, it only cost you one position what happened there yeah i was trying to to swing to the inside um and when i did i just caught too much of that bump and that little kind of jump right there off that corner and got it completely sideways so i was just in save mode at that point and then uh, thankfully i saved it quick enough that i could just slot right back in and then it was just okay i'll just wait till the pit stop now i was going to try and move on torres then and uh try to set him up going into that next corner but it just didn't you know obviously it didn't work and then you guys tried to go too wide through the chicane and it was a good effort but uh just ran out of track yeah, I, you know, I, I went uh, not very much deep, but it seems like that corner is just super slick on the inside, and and uh, went a little deep, and he did a great undercut. But then, I, you know, watching it back, I'll let the IRT decide. But it was uh, I, I didn't have much track. Let's just say that I was trying. I tried to stay as far right as I could, but there wasn't much room there. I then definitely, I definitely thought it was me to start, and uh, was definitely trying to redress the situation. But uh, I, I don't know if it mattered because he was pretty pretty damaged. That's how we read it, too, but I think you'll probably be in good shape there. Let's go ahead and get to the very end where you're in the battle with Berger. Was your car injured? It wasn't injured, but those first two laps, it's you know, these tires are, they get hot, and you have to cool them back off. And I still slid a couple corners, and it was, so it was, they were still hot, and they just wouldn't cool off. So I had to, had to back it down for a couple corners and make sure I could get them back and, and then start going again. It wasn't really injured more, than, more so than it was just tire issue. Well, you were up and down. That's it. You end up in second position. I guess that was good, but, but it was hard work getting there. Good luck to you the rest of the way. Always fun to watch a race. All right. Thanks, Sue. Appreciate it. A hard fought second position for Travis Swinkies. He finished behind his Asbury Motorsports teammate. All right. Shall we take one more shot and see if we can talk to our AM leader here? Yeah, that sounds good. Let's bring Steph Ainoff in. Uh, Steph, do you have a copy? Yes, I can hear you now. Awesome. Well, like I said, Steph, uh, congratulations with your victory today. I was saying what a race it was from you. You had uh, a spin on lap one, you fell to the back, and then you had a recovery where you basically fought through the whole field. How was it from your perspective? Well, it was a bit disappointing that I made a mistake on lap one. Uh, the inside was a bit slicker than I thought, so uh, just got it too early on the throttle and spun out. The second lap was absolutely crazy. <laughs> I don't know what happened exactly. <laughs> I still don't remember. But uh, somehow ended up on the grass and still passing people. So in the end, it was, uh, it was a good race. We, we, we caught a, a glimpse of that overtake yeah, on the grass. That was <laughs> complete mayhem, but it was a great move nonetheless. Now, you seem to almost strategize your race a little bit trying to get forward uh in using the draft of crystal sanchez to to fight your way forward was that something that you did on purpose just try to stay behind him don't fight too much and see if you can move forward move through the field with with the help of sanchez yeah we were about five seconds behind the next pack so uh i thought i would save some fuel and maybe get close that gap in the pit stop but uh in the end sanchez came out at the same time so uh but it worked out in the end because I caught up with uh, um, Bjorn de Forst. So I got the win, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and what for battle it was because you basically had two laps or three laps in the end to seal the deal. Did you have anything else than the race victory in mind? Did you before what have in mind that, well, it's still a long championship to go. There's a lot of opportunities to go. I'm not going to risk everything to get this race victory. Or were you just all out wanting to get the silverware here today uh, to, to win the race? Well, for the first 19 laps, I was a bit uh, uh, yeah, laying back a little bit just for the championship. But as soon as we caught up to Bjorn, uh, I, I went all out. So <laughs> I think he uh, he uh, 
he got the last chicane uh, wrong in the last lap. He had a slowdown. And I ran out of fuel over the line, so it was uh, fortunate. Oh, wow. So it was a real tight race in the end. Well, congratulations at least with your victory once again, Stefanov. And uh, we'll hope to see you again next week. Yes, thank you. It was Stefanov, P7 overall, but more importantly, our winner today in the M category here at the Nürburgring. A small field, but a darn exciting race. You know, we'd like to thank all the people that made this possible. Let's start with everybody at the quality. Uh, what actually are we going to thank here? Come on, Soup. Let's have the Quality Racing Syndicate for organizing the series and contracting with GSRC to broadcast it. Thanks to the sponsors, Sim, SimSportsNews.com and Hoisingville. On screen now are just some of the equipment and software used to string cyberspace into your place. Additional thanks to June Lalonde, who provides our wonderful music. See the screen to how to get a hold of more of her great work. The MX5 World Tour returns in two weeks, and we talked about it. It's going to be round six at Spa. GSRC via ISN will be there to bring you all the action. We hope you join us. Next on IESN, well, that's actually live right now. Race Spot's coverage of the Neo Endurance Series, 24 hours of Le Mans. It should be around uh, hour number six. So as soon as we're storming the castle, why don't you go on over to give them a look. Sliding across your screen now are just some of the upcoming broadcasts on GSRC. You want to know about us? Global Sim Racing Channel, Twitter, GSR Channel, Facebook, Global Sim Racing Channel, and Instagram at GSRC underscore Graham. Hey, and if you haven't done so yet, become a YouTube subscriber by heading over to our YouTube page and hitting that big red button. Finally, on behalf of the entire crew, Johan, Joe, and Doug, we'd like to thank all of you for watching, as it was indeed four-time champion Sonny Catch and picking up his second win of the season here at the Nürburgring. Ring. With that said, we're off to have fun storming that castle, so until next time, race clean, race hard, and we'll see you on the track.